Hello, Rosia. Shive here with another one of my thought bubbles. And on this one, we're going to talk about Satoshi Nakamoto. Not about his vision or how people have messiahize him or put him up on this very big pedestal. And rightfully so for what he's done, but all things afterwards are supposed to be through his thoughts and lens. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about his Bitcoin or the potential amount of Bitcoin he could have. Uh, most people have a hard line stating that there is a possibility that Satoshi Nakamoto has 1 million Bitcoin. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to stick with that. It's, it was a bit of a myth. Most indications because of blockchain spies and tracking on the public ledgers indicate that he may have around somewhere around 300k in uh, Bitcoin. And the reason why we're going to talk about it is with all these uh, block add-ons like Lightning Network and uh, SegWit, which has activated the potential for uh, atomic swaps, the value of Bitcoin for its utility for transactions has increased. And because of these add-ons, what you have is you have a space that's increasing in value. Now, there's also speculation that has also increased its value, but you also had this like curve, if you will, where there was a fork of the coin in which we got uh, Bitcoin Cash. And that in itself has added value because people are making a choice. Do they want to utilize this particular coin or do they want to use Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin Cash, of course, has the, the history, the same history. So there's already a, a big chunk of that value attached to Bitcoin that comes from Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash comes from Bitcoin. And because of that, these additional add-ons or airdrops as they're being called, like clams and any other future airdrops that someone may do to, to widely distribute Bitcoin or their their coin to, with Bitcoin, you you have an, another layer of utility or value added to the to the to Bitcoin in and of itself. And this made me think of that one let's say it's one million coins that Satoshi Nakamoto has not done any with anything with. If Bitcoin, Bitcoin were to rise and continue to rise in value, uh, right now he his Bitcoin value is like a small um, or mid-sized company, but could potentially be dwarfing the value of an entire GP day of a country. What do you do with that wealth? What will Satoshi Nakamoto do with that wealth? And maybe think of what could be done. And what came to mind is sovereign wealth funds. Now, a sovereign wealth fund is a state-owned investment fund and entity that is commonly established from the balance of payment surplus, official foreign currency operations, the proceeds of privatization, government transfer payments, fiscal surplus, and receipts results from resource exports. Uh, the definition of sovereign wealth fund ex excludes, among other things, foreign currency reserve assets held by monetary authorities for the traditional balance of payments or monetary payments for purpose of state-owned uh, SOEs in a traditional sense of government exemption pension funds. So you have these funds, these sovereign wealth funds, and they are, have a significant added value to a particular country. For example, um, you have Norway, which has one of the largest sovereign funds and value funds out there, and that was because they set aside their payments from oil to their, their fund, and they haven't touched it. It's almost like a rainy day of, of fun for you know, bad shit could happen or for investments for your country for the future, whether it be your current generation or future generations onward. And maybe think that perhaps this is what you could do with Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin. You can divide up the Bitcoin into various chunks to be sovereign wealth funds for other countries. Imagine if each country around the globe, uh, which is like, I believe... Which is 195 countries with two not being recognized. So for the purposes of the video, let's say there's 200 countries in the world. Divide uh, 1 million coins by 200 gives each country a sovereign wealth fund of 5,000 Bitcoin. Now imagine for global purposes of making a new monetary financial system, if every country in the world had a Bitcoin reserve. And... This is very important because if you look at what a sovereign wealth fund is, it's a state-owned investment fund entity that is commonly established for the balance of payment surpluses, official foreign car currency operations, and proceeds for privatization. They do things like stabilize funds, savings for future generations, pension reserves, reserve investments. So it's a fund for a rainy day. It's a fund for future investments, funds for either 
when shit gets bad or when um an oil based economy economy into something different uh which is something that Norway has done they have one of the, the strongest and most secure as well as um it's like one trillion dollars and it's all based off of oil and they're they're shifting their country into greens um they're not the only country that's done this you know Saudi Arabia China we'll, we'll go through each one but they have a trillion in assets from the excess surplus of their sales of oil and they've done this over the decades they started this in in the 70s so one trillion uh, from their investments in uh, mutual funds and commodities and things of that nature from the last almost 40 years uh, Abu, Dhabi, Abu Dhabi has done this they have a sovereign fund from 76 um, same thing so this allows countries particularly countries that don't have a significant military power um, China is another country. United States, interestingly enough, doesn't have a sovereign front. Kuwait, but have a, a value, like a, a commodity like oil is heavily traded and is much needed. And you can now take that wealth and either use it for your current times or when things go bad or for future generations to invest in. And it's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have. Not all, all countries have it. Like I say, that the United States does it. So imagine if you were to, this is the most verifiable address on the Bitcoin blockchain. The first address, the Genesis address that Satoshi Nakamoto has done. He, you know, at the time it was 50 BC was the reward for mining. He has also had received additional um, donations through that particular address. Now taking these coins, these 1 million coins and dividing them out to the world would greatly enhance the ability for Bitcoin to be a uh, global currency, but allow for other countries that don't have the depth of resources of a mountain range or oil or mineral resources or access to the, the traditional sense of great economic changers within their country, they now have an equal footing within the global economy. Because now they hold a highly tradable, highly valuable, you know, comedy commodity slash uh, currency that's the new basically the new financial instrument of the 21st century so think of all the bullshit that happened before prior in the previous century and now you have a new financial system that is not based off of exploitation um, warfare taking other people's resources to enhance your own colonization all of that you have a now a clean financial system is not developed from those type of resources. Granted, it, you know, in a sense, it, it's a build off of that old system, but now we're switching it into a new age, a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of interacting and engaging as a result of this great communication device of the internet. Now we have a financial device that is tethered to the, to the internet, but is also not tethered to any of the old previous um, qualms or issues people have had with the whole economic system that we're currently in. And now because of that, you, if you hold on to these 5,000 Bitcoins, if you hold it into a sovereign wealth fund, everyone knows that these countries have it. Um, it's transparent and tradable, so it's probably one of the first transparent financial instruments that any of these countries have. Um, they're holding it into a fund and allowing it to grow over time. Now they're in, not only will they allow for it to remain, you know, non-touch for a while at least, but now they have a more active incentive to permit cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or other crypto commodities or currencies to exist. Now they have a stake in the game. And that's great great for the purpose of Bitcoin in and of itself. Because then, now we have the power structure without even regulation, without any, um, hey, do it this way kind of an incentive or control mechanisms. Now you have all these countries that are going to fight and vie for, in the, in the free market sense of fighting, the growth of this particular financial instrument. 
Plus you have these additional add-ons like clamps, which was an airdrop that occurred in 2014. And then you have these hard forks that everyone says is gonna die, but they're not like Bitcoin Cash. Now there's gonna be, and um, we'll talk about it on Musings of the Shy, Bitcoin Gold. And then the Segwit 2X, which looks like it's still gonna go on. There's gonna be another hard fork. So there's gonna be four coins of Bitcoin in existence. Uh, three of them are going to be, you know, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, and Bitcoin um, Segwit 2X are directly tied to the original Bitcoin legacy. And any other additional airdrop that may have add value to Bitcoin, um, like clams, which is um, $8. Clams are $8 a coin right now. So you have that. So you, you will have a sovereign wealth fund that will, as part of the 21st century, that is not deprived, deprived from, you know, digging into the earth, causing environmental, um, significant environmental damage. Um, it's not an exploitive thing where you're using um, colonization to uh, conquer a people, take their resources and for yourself. Uh, so acts of violence, basically a different type of economic system that is not derived from ec from an acts of violence, but from mathematical princ principles and people voluntarily choosing to be participants in this um, new financial instrument. But most importantly, a financial instrument that is so disrupt disruptive to the, the previous one, but so distributed that no one central authority or one central government or region of the world controls the entire um, economic power of, er of everyone. And because of this, again, the incentive on these countries, many of these countries don't want to break away, just like we individually want to break away from the current economic situation, now have the power to do so. Because now they have a sovereign wealth fund that is heavily invested in the new economic platform. Plus you have these little old, tiny airdrops like clams that are coming about and you know, whatever future forks or airdrops that may occur that might increase the value of that particular commodity. So looking at this chart, you know, the amount of Bitcoin is here to the left, it's from zero to Dr. Evil. And here are the different types of Bitcoin you have um, originally when I did this you know Bitcoin was just hovering below 3,000 so you know 4,000 the value of Bitcoin uh, gives you four billion dollars uh, just for one million Bitcoins then you have Bitcoin gold uh, Bitcoin cash And whatever Segway 2X is, which I'm going to say is the same value when it first comes out. And then you have clams. So you have the potential of $4 billion for Bitcoin gold, uh, Bitcoin cat, uh, the original Bitcoin. Segway 2X, say the same amount, $4 billion, just keep things the same. And then you have Bitcoin gold, which will be around, you know, $200 million, And then $470 million for Bitcoin cash. And then whatever future airdrops that may occur down the line, uh, this is a, you know, that attachment to Satoshi Nakamoto's uh, 1 million Bitcoin, that is significant in of itself. And then be able to distribute that, be able to, you know, quote unquote, airdrop to the rest of the world, um, whether it be like a signing ceremony like Zcash has done, or you just create a bunch of multi-sig wallets, or you put on some one-dime sticks, uh, ledgers, anything like that. That movement to say that this is for the globe, this is for everybody in the country, or just even a global fund that might be controlled by some kind of nonprofit organization, or a mixture of nonprofit and governmental organizations, uh, if you want to keep it as a whole, instead of breaking it up. It, it would change things. I mean, it would dramatically shift the way people are going to economically think about the internet, what they're going to think about the type of different resources they want to expenditure, you know, expenditure in the future. They might, you know, start doubling down and putting fibers everywhere, making things wireless everywhere because their, their commodity, their sovereign wealth fund is tied to an item that has to transmit across the internet. 
So this is going to open up a whole new game for a lot of people. Just think of all the uh, block, you know, technology experts or devs that would get into the space. Um, think of all the people that have um, the talent, but maybe not the, quite the means, but now are being hired by their government to secure this new sovereign wealth fund, to develop other um, tangible um, utility to the blockchain so that Bitcoin can be a continuing, ongoing um, growth mechanism. So, you know, every country might in fact start Bitcoin mining. We might start having, uh, you know, nodes now being equitably distributed across the world. And there would be other coins that could be added into the sovereign wealth fund, like Litecoin or Dogecoin, um, or any you know Ethereum. Any of the because the Ethereum is giving some government attention, and we'll talk about that in the Music of the Shy podcast. So to wrap things up here, um, a sovereign wealth fund that will allow for a greater adoption, incentive, if you will, for Bitcoin or any cryptocurrencies out there or all of them to exist would greatly enhance the value of of cryptocurrency. It will allow for the decentralization to occur further for the coin. But most importantly, it will enable and allow for other nations to actually be be on the equal playing field of all the other nations in existence. Because now they have a stake in the new economic platform. Get me wrong, this will be very difficult to do if this were ever to occur. be extremely disruptive. But again, it would benefit cryptocurrencies in the long run. So that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you for listening. You can like and subscribe to this channel, Heroja Thought blog or thought bubble you can also help contribute by uh, either ethereum litecoin bitcoin cash monero and again uh, thank you very much so much for listening and until next time uh, to the moon